cover tonight, we have a show on 1984 that we want to get to right away, but I have to give you a, a brief update on the State of the Union address in case, I mean, in case you, you know, were relying on the media to fill you in, uh, they probably missed a few things. You probably don't know about the spilt milk line from the president that had the Republicans complaining about, I don't know, blah, blah. and then the Democrats are like, that's ridiculous. They're squabbling over the political ramifications of stuff, but the ramifications of what this president said last night about the founders framework in the constitution was completely ignored. With or without this Congress, I will keep taking actions that help the economy grow. But I can do a whole lot more with your help. Because when we act together, there's nothing the United States of America can achieve. Mm. Yeah. How true it is. When they act together, it's also constitutional. <laughs> when they don't, it's not. He really wants to work with Congress. He does, but gosh darn it, he just doesn't know how. If they just would agree with him on everything and they just start making, you know, just start saying this word, yes, to him. Then he wouldn't have to be uh, dictating all of these things. It's just hard to pass bills. Mm, makes my head hurt. This is give him the power to ignore Congress. What we're seeing is uh, from a book that I told you about a long time ago. It was Philip Drew, Administrator. If you read it, congratulations, you know it's one of the worst novels of all time. But it was Woodrow Wilson's favorite novel. He read it four times. And I'm telling you, it is playing out before our very eyes. If you read Philip Drew, Administrator, it's so bad, it's free on the Internet. Um, if you read that book, you will see somewhere, somewhere out there in the ether, Woodrow Wilson is celebrating. You may understand the inefficiency the president speaks of. More common term, one we used to use, it's kind of old timey, it's called checks and balances. Yeah, our founders uh, thought, you know, maybe, uh, maybe we should throw something in there like, a, I don't know, a wrench in the spokes of a crazy dictator, you know, when they start moving so quickly and uh, trying to be more responsive for the American people. That's the way it always begins. Last night was nothing less than a president proposing an end to any in checks and balances, uh, any and all checks and balances for a president. The founders wisely knew that giving one man too much power was a terrible idea. I don't think you should give me that power. Because if you did, oh, I'd make some changes. First of all, I'd have all the people of Hostess on my cabinet, and I'd meet with them. Anyway. This is why Washington rejected the title of king. Too much power in one man's hands only makes it easier for that one man to grab the government and clamp down on the people. All they need is an excuse, a, um, a crisis. Hey, I know, like a global economic crisis. No, that could never happen. Wait a minute, George Soros said in the economic crisis in the Financial Times, this. It will be an excuse for cracking down and using a strong arm tactic to maintain law and order, which carried out to an extreme could bring about a repressive political system, a society where individual liberty is much more constrained, which would be a break from the tradition of the United States. Well, at least he knows what our traditions are. He's exactly right. Interestingly enough, he is the same guy who, while I was at Fox, said that the Tea Party and people like me were going to cause, quote, this open society to be on the verge of some dictatorial democracy. Hmm. He also mentioned that Orwell's uh, book, 1984, that we were actually helping make this happen because 1984 was causing our fantasies. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Is this a fantasy? 1984? Tonight we're going to do a show for you that... Um, I want you to check every word we say. Don't believe anything that we say, because this is a conspiracy. This is a fantasy. Tonight, don't take anything I say at face value. You do your own homework. You prove it right or wrong. And when you get to the end of that exercise, maybe you'll say, hey, spooky dude, not so fantasy, huh? not uh, mm, kind of spooky except it's not the Tea Party doing it. It's a government, a big, out-of-control government, and people on both sides are involved and have been for quite some time. But this time, don't worry, 
This time it's not going to be like the book. No, this time it will be different. Uh-huh. Hello, America. I thought I'd address today so I could say, Jedediah, the cows need a milkin. But um, Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program and GBTV. Tonight is a different kind of program. I want to warn you right off the top, the critics are going to call this program crazy and conspiratorial and everything else in between. That's why I ask you to look at the laws and the regulations being put in place. Um, look at the incredible technological advancements that are being made and do your own homework. Do not take anything I say at face value. I'm telling you, we've done our own homework. But this is really only important if you can defend this uh, with your friends without bringing up my name or anybody else's name. This is something that you're going to have to say to people. No, or, yeah, no, I did my own homework. I looked it up. You want to go, come, come, come to spooky Google with me and I'll show you exactly what I mean. You cannot relay this information without knowing it firsthand yourself. We're heading into a very, very scary time. We're headed off a cliff economically. A crisis situation is around the corner. And our governments, not just this one, but all over the world, are making it easier and easier for them to snap into action and not let that opportunity go to waste. But you're going to be surprised at some of the things that are already being done. We have the National Defense Authorization Act. Now, this is something that we talked to you about late last year. This is something that is routinely passed to fund every year the various military operations. But there was kind of an eye bleed provision this year. The military would now have the power to detain terrorism suspects, including U.S. citizens, on U.S. soil and hold them indefinitely without trial. President Obama said he's got some reservations about this bill. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. I, I remember the reservations I was thinking is, you know, didn't he say you don't want people scooped up in the middle of the night because it hurts us all? Yeah. He signed it. He signed the bill only after he made sure that it applied to U.S. citizens. He signed it on New Year's Eve, December 31st. No one was paying attention. Obama said that this administration would also not authorize the holding of U.S. citizens without trial. May I ask, was he lying then or is he lying now? Let's take him at his word, though, shall we? Let's say this president be doesn't become a brutal dictator. What happens if the next guy does? Why would we bother granting this power in the first place to a president? Remember, Obama promised us this. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, no, no, no. just as strong, no, we don't. just as well-funded. No, I don't want that. Anybody here want that? No. no, anybody. I mean, nobody thinks that's a good idea. No, I don't think we should have a civilian force that is, is uh, just as well-trained and equipped as the military. I couldn't figure this one out for a long time. How, how, where is that? And I remember being on Fox. Remember, the, did anybody see the show where I was wearing the Lederhosen? Edelweiss. And um, I was talking about um, AmeriCorps, I think it was. And, um, and I said, I think this has got to be AmeriCorps because that's the way FDR tried to do it. No, nope, no. Nope. These guys are much smarter. When they reduce the troop levels, for instance, in Iraq, um, they up another level, independent contractors. They reduce the level of the mil military and through the State Department hire more civilian contractors. It's just as powerful and just as well equipped as the U.S. military. But they don't answer to Congress. They're civilians. They only answer to Hillary Clinton's State Department or whoever replaces Hillary Clinton. Obama has shown little regard for Congress and the Constitution. On appointments, he just went around Congress. When Congress refuses to act, and as a result, hurts our economy and puts our people at risk, then I have an obligation as president to do what I can without them. Despite saying this in a 2007 interview, quote, 
The president does not have the power under the Constitution to unilaterally authorize a military attack in a situation that does not involve stopping an actual or imminent threat to the nation, end quote. That's Barack Obama. He seems pretty clear. He's also, he uh, likes to remind people, a constitutional scholar. Well, just last year, he sent us to war with Libya without bothering to consult Congress. Is that a problem? He called it not a war, a kinetic military action. So... I guess it's okay. Earlier this month, Obama announced plans for a national ID card for the internet. Anybody heard of this? Anybody? Raise your hand if you heard of it. Most people, this isn't reported on the news. That's why your friends will not believe it. That's why you have to do your own homework. You ready to wrap your head in duct tape because your head's going to explode on this one. Instead of having different passwords and accounts for, say, your bank online, GBTV, and Hostess.com, which I, I mean, I don't, who's got an account at Hostess.com? Um, you'll just, you'll just uh, have one. Obama wants to change that and create an identity ecosystem that will centralize personal information and credentials through the government. This way you'll have one handy government-approved sign-in. Log in and password, and the government will protect it for you. The administration says this will help improve security and enhance your privacy. Well, I'm sure it will. Homeland Security okayed the monitoring of journalists, and I haven't heard an outrage call or cry from any journalists. Excuse me? But it's not just journalists. It's now anyone who uses traditional and or social media in real time to keep audiences aware and informed. They use the word audience there. Uh, I like to call it friends. I like to call it followers. If you have, if you're on Twitter or you have Facebook and you have anybody following you, well, that's your audience. You re do you report things in real time? Of course you do. Who's commenting on stuff? No, I'm sorry, we don't do real time in the inner space of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, World Wide Web and Superhighway. We like to keep our comments back about four weeks. That's the whole point. Everything's in real time. Congress has also proposed the Internet kill switch. This bill, in an emergency situation, would shut down private sector or government networks in the event of a cyber attack. And, of course, we told you last week about SOPA and PIPA. We'll get more into that later. But you can see the Internet is a very big concern for those in power. Why? Because they do not control it. So they must control it or stop it. Here's the latest from one of the big leftist sites today. Read this. This is from Slate. Warning, this site contains conspiracy theories. This is alarming. The premise of this article is that Google has a responsibility to help stop the spread of fringe beliefs on the Internet. Can anybody define a fringe belief? Anybody have any idea? Name a fringe belief. Name one. Name one that you think should be regulated. 9-11 truthers, there's one, and that's actually on that list. Birthers. Birthers, there's another one. Not on the list. Global warming. Global warming. Anybody who's a global warming denier, there you're on the fringe. You have to be taken out of the algorithm. Anything else? People who store food. People who s steal food? Store food. Store food. Oh, that's a pretty good one because those guys are crazy. <clears throat> Watch this. The author laments the fact that people could deposit their own thoughts on the internet with little or no quality control. Let me ask you, who should be controlling your thoughts? Who should have their thoughts controlled? Here is the list. 9-11 truthers, because they're crazy. People who think HIV and AIDS aren't linked. I don't even know those people. People who deny global warming, which would be me. And people who oppose, get this, the Darwinian account of evolution. It's not even a theory anymore. By the way, about two months ago, they disproved uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. Everybody thought it was fact. They just disproved it with the super collider. Did you hear that? It was a theory. They don't even want you to see other theories of how man came to pass. Only Darwin's. 
They propose to pour resources into filtering search results. Quote, resources should go into thwarting their growth by targeting their potential rather than existent members. In other words, the crazies are already in there. They're already lost. Just stop new people from reading it and falling for it. Now, they want to do it with an algorithm, but they're already doing it by targeting and marginalizing people. That's how they're doing it now. It's Saul Alinsky. But this whole thing with changing the algorithms, it sounds really familiar. I'm not sure where I heard it before. Oh, I, I remember now. Cass Sunstein. He wrote about this way back when he was a kid in 2008, suggesting the U.S. government send teams to cognitively infiltrate online groups and websites they sought to deem conspiracy theories about the government. Then they would start praising the government while discrediting the conspiracy theory even if, and this is my favorite line, even if the theory ended up being true. Using covert agents in chat rooms. Mark my words, gang, I have no evidence of this at all, but they're doing it. I, you, can, you can feel them, you can see them when you're reading. When you're reading comments, you know. But it's no big deal. Cass Sunstein is only the regulation czar, and he's not a problem at all. At a time when Obama is trying to end checks and balances, not a problem at all. And it's not like Google is in bed with the government. I mean, that's not happening at all. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yes, they are. The White House is. They are. And they're very excited also about being on Google+. Plus. Their former CEO, current executive chairman, was a major donor campaign advisor and was on Obama's transition advisory board. He now heads up Google's government relations team. Now, I run a small business. I don't have one of those. I, I don't even know. I don't want one of those. Do you have one? Do you have a government relations team? You should get one. All the cool kids have one. Obama has considered him for Commerce Secretary and Chief Technology Officer. I don't think there's anything weird about that at all. I'm totally comfortable with this relationship. I'm sure you are. Google has put in new privacy policies um, that we heard about today that could lead to more tracking. Google says that this change is only going to allow Google to do good and useful things, like letting a user know they might be late for a meeting based on your calendar that Google can go in and see, and your current location. They're going to map it for you. And by the way, you will not be able to opt out of this policy. Google. Didn't they, didn't they used to say, don't be evil? The technology coming out is frightening. It can be really good, but it is in the hands of, I fear, too many crazy, evil people. Yet we readily hand over our liberties for the sake of a little convenience. The Blaze has a series of stories posted on this. You can go see them all there at theblaze.com today, and they have more on the news uh, at uh, 7 o'clock tonight. Here's a, just a couple of them. The NYPD is reportedly getting ready to use this x-ray scanner. Do we have the x-ray scanner? Uh, this x-ray scanner to see if you're carrying a weapon. It's radiation technology that they say you won't feel, it won't hurt anybody, it's all fine, and they can detect guns and other items on you from 16 feet away. But don't worry, you won't even know they're doing it. You won't know they're there. Okay, that makes it worse. You won't notice the military drones also in the sky that they're starting to use over our cities. That makes it worse. DHS is also looking into using war zone surveillance on American soil in persistent mode to figure out, quote, the patterns of life data. Again, the stated use is well intended, border security. But are we really going to allow every square inch of America to be persistently monitored by our government? There are many people that say, yes, what, I have nothing to fear. Oh, you should. Say hello to 1984. Do you remember writing in your diary, freedom is the freedom to say two plus two equals four? Yes. How many fingers am I holding up? Four. And if the party says there are not four, but five, then how many? No. That's no use. You're lying. Orwell 
wrote this novel in 1948. He picked 1984 because it was the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Fabian Socialists. He wrote this in 1948 without any idea what kind of technologies would lie ahead. The book is, is about a society named Oceana, which is ruled by a dictatorship of the party. And here is the power structure in the book. This is Big Brother. Here's the top 2%. Then the outer party, and this is just the average Joe. And there's a constant war and the government surveillance and the mind control because they have to protect the average Joe. The party leader views individuality and reason as a thought crime. And everyone's forced to work for the greater good. There is no individual anymore. It's collective. There's no privacy whatsoever because telescreens are all over the place. That's what they called them in 1948. How many times do you come in contact with a camera on the internet now in your life? There were at, uh, at home, they're at work, they're um, everywhere today and in the book. And in the book, the government reads letters. They can't surely do that now with email. Thought police have undercover agents who pose as normal citizens and report anyone with subversive tendencies. Isn't that exactly what Cass Sunstein said that they should do? The constant monitoring leads to the, the citizens to being completely under control. And the tiniest hint of rebellion, like Tea Party or somebody who says, hey, let's go occupy this. If it's an uprising, it is squashed. Watch. The forces of darkness and the treasonable maggots who collaborate with them must, can, and will be wiped from the face of the earth. We must crush them. We must smash them. We must stamp them out. We, the people of Oceania, and our traditional allies, the people of Eurasia, will not rest until the final victory has been achieved. Death to the eternal enemy of Oceania. Death! Death! I've never really watched that movie because just this part of it just freaks me out. Imagine what could be accomplished now with the kind of technology we have. If you can't imagine it, you're going to show. You're going to be shown it tonight. You're going to be shown things that, honestly, when I found out about them, I called uh, one of my guests and said, there's no way this is true. There's no way this is true. Oh, yes, it is. And the technology I was finding out about was invented in the 1970s and has been in use since the 70s but the updates will chill your blood I mean you're you're gonna be lucky not to break into little ice cubes it will chill you to the core we will show you some of the weapons at this government's disposal and many of them are look they're they're pitched to us as this is gonna help and so we willingly hand over our freedom in the name of safety don't get me started with Ben Franklin. One day we will wake up, maybe. Maybe we will wake up and we'll realize we thought we were free and realize we were anything but. And then it will be too late. How do I know? History tells me so. This is Milton Mayer. This is from the book They Thought They Were Free. This is about Germany in World War II. This separation of government from the people, this widening of the gap, took place so gradually and so insensibly, each step disguised, perhaps not even intentionally, as a temporary emergency measure or associated with true patriotic allegiance or with real social purposes. And all of the crisis and the reforms, real reforms too, so occupied the people that they did not see the slow motion underneath of the whole process of government growing remoter and remoter. How is it possible that we don't even remember World War II? They thought they were free. We're going to do a whole episode on uh, this particular uh, book in the next few weeks. But tonight, when we come back, we will show you what this government uh, is doing. 
As I told you, Google is changing its privacy policies, which basically means nothing will be private if you use Google. This latest move forward uh, on uh, transparency and what other government information or what other information will the government or Google be able to gather about you? You, when you look into what Google is doing, um, it should bother you. It should bother you. I don't know why it's any of Google's business to know my political affiliation, my medical information, what I ordered online for dinner, you know, who I voted to get kicked off of American Idol. I don't know. I don't know why they need to know anything about what I watch on YouTube.